If you're a dude, at some point in your life, you've probably daydreamed about being a Navy SEAL, blowing up the bad guys, secret underwater missions, and of course, just a little bit of shooting. But then you open your eyes and you realize, yeah, no way. That's because these are mega rare elite dudes who actually have the supernatural ability required to actually become Navy SEALs. They're extreme type A warriors who can't comprehend the meaning of the word average. They are the extreme opposite of average. This is Clint Emerson, a retired Navy SEAL, seasoned combat warrior, and among other things, he served on the renowned SEAL Team 6. So when Clint decided to write a book helping people learn to defend themselves against bad dudes, yeah, he didn't just share a few basic techniques. He mapped out 100 deadly f ways to put someone into the ground. Clint has written three best-selling books, is a sought-after public speaker, and hosts one of the top-rated podcasts in the country. Not surprisingly, Clint loves his flag, and he also loves his tattoos. So we rolled to Austin, Texas for some think, ink, and drink with Clint and his newest tattoo honoring 15 different Navy SEAL buddies who've lost their lives. Jonas Kelsall, Matt Mills, Ryan Owens, Glenn Doherty, Dave Scott, Mike Martin, Gus Kaminsky, Jason Freewall, Tom Retzer, Dave Tapper, Matt Mason, Chris Kyle, Jay Myers, Lou Langless. I never want anybody to forget my buddies, so no better way to do it than a tattoo. So I know you see the big scary tattoo motherfucker and you know you found the right place. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Nice good to meet you, you in the man. flesh. Yeah. How's everything? Good, you? You got a lot of tattoos already, man. A lot more than I realized. Yeah, I think you're, you've outdone me though. Man, how many years were you in the SEALs? Uh, it was 20 total years of service and I went in to be a SEAL. So you're talking boot camp, BUDS, and then off to a SEAL team. BUDS is basic underwater demolition SEAL training and it is the selection process to determine who's got what it takes to be an actual Navy SEAL. And my class started with roughly 180 guys and then we finished with 27 originals. It's the infamous program and people see yeah. on YouTube where you know they want they they don't want you to quit but they, but they encourage it because if you'd quit in training you'd quit in the battlefield right. and have the bell and if you ring the bell three times yeah they're just saying <laughs> never ring the bell right that's kind of a quote that comes out of buds there's a lot of selection programs out there you actually have to walk to an instructor and say i quit but buds is different in the fact that you're going to this inanimate object and you have to ring it so the difference is between a human and a bell the bell doesn't give a if you're cold, you're tired, you miss your mommy, you miss your daddy. Whereas a human that you walk up to might go, are you sure you wanna quit? Don't you really wanna be here? Don't you wanna get your trident? Don't you wanna be a SEAL? They don't want somebody who has to be, has to have a sales pitch to stay, right? That bell doesn't give two f**ks about you. And it's like, you ring it and you're out. What about your deployments? I came in in the 90s and uh, pre 9-11. So we were usually working in the Gulf. Persian Gulf, and most of the operations were called VBSS, Vessel Board Search and Seizure, which was awesome. You know, you're talking these these big um, dows or uh, container ships coming out of Iraq, and this was during the big embargo, and Saddam was not allowed to be pushing weapons or oil or anything out. So it was this game of cat and mouse in the middle of the night in the Persian Gulf on a regular basis, and they're cruising at 20 knots. We've got our jet boats, you know, and then we would get in behind them, come up alongside, do these crazy hook climbs, total frogman stuff, yeah. right? You're in the middle of an ocean, in the middle of the night, and you're 
basically climbing up the side of a vessel that's moving, and that's just getting on to the target vessel. When you see monuments like this about the Americans who served and specifically, in many cases, those who lost their lives, what goes through your mind? One, it's, I think, for any service member to see this stuff, it's, it's another form of appreciation. You get a lot of people on the street that say, hey, thank you, if they see you in uniform or know that you served, and that's, that's cool, but I think seeing something physical like this, and it's something that's permanent, it's gonna be here forever, you know, same reason I'm getting the tattoo. It's like, I don't, you know, I never want anybody to forget my buddies. Pain. Ouch. Hello. I'm it's already okay. gonna say ouch. Good morning. What's going on? Hey. Marco. Hey Clint. Nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you man. Drew. Nice to meet you guys. How are you guys? Good, Good man. You. Are you feeling heavy handed today? Did you have the painful needle well, already? I turned on my hammer and chisel mode. Yeah, there we go. So a little carving action would be good. <laughs> You excited for this? Yeah, I am actually. It's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool one. It's, yeah. Um, yeah it's a lot of meaning, a lot of meaning behind it. So I'm kind of that sounds cheesy, but I'm very honored. I'm gonna do a drop shadow across this whole way. So it basically looks like the flag is laying over. And then I'll go ahead and do the actual drop shadow on each one of the, uh, each one of the letters with a highlight over. So it looks like we, like we talked about, it looks like it was carved in. And then I'll make the bone frog look like it's um, metal and sitting on top, yeah. Yeah, I think it's gonna look cool. So what? this back background will look like, kind of like. Marbly? Yeah, like the Vietnam Wall. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Mommy? Have a lot of happy, joyful memories each time when their names comes up. It yeah. feels like it feels like each one of them still lives on through you. And no, and I think people. that's key. It's it's easy to get choked up. That's the easy part, you know. I think it's better to, uh, for me, I remember them with the funny stories or with the just crazy moments, you know. Remember them for who they were and the and the shit they did and the crazy crap they pulled off, or or even their calmness, or you know, not Mike Martin. He was my mentor at SEAL Team 3. He was a Vietnam SEAL, tatted from the bottom of his ear all the way to his toe. And uh, he really, really liked his cock. <laughs> and he, the first time I met him Did as a new guy. I think that's what you were going to say. I just, as a new guy, I'm in the shower, right? Here I am, rinsing my hair out or whatever. And I look forward. And now imagine a guy tatted from head to toe butt naked stand in front of you, but with the, with the voice and accent of Joe Pesci, right? And he's like, hey, you a, you a new guy? I'm like, yes, Master Chief. I'm like, okay. But the whole time, his dick is touching my inner thigh, right? <laughs> he's like right up in there. So you're the new guy. <laughs> he's, a, he's got a great story. He, um, he, got, he actually did Vietnam as a SEAL did a lot of crazy stuff then, got out, went back to New Jersey, I believe, and worked steel mills, and joined the Hells Angels. And then he became an actual pretty notorious Hells Angel in the area, told the Prez, hey, I wanna go back in the Navy and keep doing what I was doing. So he's one of very few angels that were allowed to leave. He went back in the Navy, and then, and that was in the 80s, and then I come in the Navy in the 90s, and there he is. He's he was this like bigger than life guy. And any like Vietnam SEAL, those are legends, right? They, they, they were the ones that just laid waste and did all kinds of crazy stuff. And were, you know, the Viet Cong were terrified of these Navy SEAL guys, right? Jason Freewall. <laughs> Anybody that knows him knows he was a little bit of a troublemaker. And that's how I know him. We went through a couple of different training blocks together. 
and I was at SEAL Team 3, he was at SEAL Team 5, and we ended up going through a couple of different pipelines that were pretty long. <laughs> like, we weren't good together, <laughs> like, when they, or some people would say we were good together, but it kind of depends, right? He liked to have a lot of fun. We had fun in class, we had fun outside of class, but anybody who knew Jason knew that he carried just this incredible happiness. What happened to him? Jason ended up, uh, he, uh, that was in uh, Afghanistan. He ended up taking a round. Each of these guys I either deployed with, friends with, or went through training with. I feel like when you do stuff like this, it's, it generates conversation. Not only do you keep their memory, but it's, they're dead. It's really for their families, right? Their families want their brother, their son, their husband memory to stay alive. So no better way to do it than a tattoo. It's like, I don't, you know, I never want anybody to forget my buddies. Um, and so I think it's fitting. It's there forever. This guy's, this guy's never been on a boat, he gets seasick, so he got to be real. Never been in the water. I don't right. think he'd been in the water, the water before. <laughs> oh, sh don't let him drive. <laughs> Keep him away from the wheel. Tell me about Tom Retzer. Thomas Retzer, old Tom. I ended up doing my very first deployment with Tom. He was built like a fire hydrant, a little stocky dude. And a true professional, and always tried to outwork everyone. And I mean everyone. He was there first and left last, and was an overall just badass dude. And he was in the, the turret of a, you know, an armored up Humvee and a sniper just got the best of him, took a, took a headshot. Tommy was just, he's a good, good dude, solid operator. You got a buddy named Jay. But Jay was a real life Jackal, the assassin. You remember that movie? With the Hitman? Yeah. Carlos the Jackal. Jacko, you know, it was played by uh, Bruce Willis. All right. <laughs> yeah. He had this code he lived by. He wore all black. He carried a wad of cash. He was always ready to exit any place he walked into. Just one of the most unique guys because of, not, not because of, as a SEAL, but more because of his lifestyle. He had a, uh, he had this old, like, uh, Magnum PI era Ferrari. He just lived and breathed a very clandestine lifestyle. Jay Myers was one of my mentors in my very first platoon. It's all very measured. A uh, great guy, but he was one of those dudes where you'd be like, "Hey, Jay, you wanna, you wanna, anytime, you wanna go out?" You'd be like, "Yeah, sure." You wanna go, you know, whatever. You can name whatever, and he'd always go, "Yeah, sure. Why not? Let's go. Let's do it." What about your buddy Lou? Yeah, Lou, Lou Langless I mean, is like almost a legend in our community. He spent a majority of his career at the command and it uh, didn't matter what he did, he always did it better than everybody and it could be with three days no sleep. He was a badass at everything he did. Was Chris Kyle uh, a legendary shot all along in the team? Like what was his myth and rep? You know, he was a SEAL Team 3 with me. We did the initial push into Iraq together. What type of guy was Chris? But Chris was just a, a good old boy and a good friend. He did a lot of good things. Obviously, you've heard about him. 
because he was the American sniper. We were both Texas kids and became fast friends just because of our like-minded Texas pride. You know, Texas contributes a lot of seals lot to the, seals from Texas. Uh, it seems like, yeah. Jonas Kelsall. Yeah, Jonas, a uh, young officer, great reputation. So he was the main officer with the Captain Phillips rescue. So he ran, he was the guy who was creative enough to, to, to lure one of the Somali pirates onto the boat, you know, and separate them and create that kind of disgruntledness between the pirates that were on the capsule with Phillips and, you know, their leader who was now on a boat. And, uh, but he was a, he was a good, you know, upcoming, like laid back, oh, from Louisiana. I think he was from Shreveport. So Glenn Dougherty was, uh, kind of a, in a fairly well-known situation when he passed, right? Yeah. Glenn died in Benghazi. Glenn was, I think almost 30 when he joined the Navy. He was one of the older guys to go through buds because he had already hitchhiked across America following the Grateful Dead and then ended up in Alaska on a fishing boat and then ended up working in this microbrewery somewhere in California. You know, he just worked all these oddball jobs, ended up around a campfire with some SEALs and they're like, hey man, you should join the Navy and be a SEAL. So like the next day, he literally like went and joined the Navy and became a SEAL. Became a seal. <laughs> so yeah, and then he uh, ended up at SEAL Team 3 with me and uh, we did two deployments together and then he went to the CIA and you know, I was working in Benghazi and now there's books and movies. If you talk to anybody who knew Glenn, they'll all, every single person I know says, he was my best friend. He was my best friend. That's, so that kind of tells you a lot, right? I mean, not too many people say that about, you have a, hundreds of people saying, Glenn Doherty was my best friend. <laughs> but, he's also the guy, he was also the guy you love to hate because he was fucking good at everything, you know? Didn't matter what we were doing, man. That guy would always be better than everybody else at it. And you're like, fuck, I hate you. Yeah, boy. Yeah. Hey, look at that. Get him. Get it, get it. <laughs> look at that. Finally, we can go home now. Sushi. Wait, that's sushi. Don't Got one. Back. Little Lake Travis Pass. Yeah. Working your draw is almost more important than, you know, like shooting, because a lot of people forget about how am I going to get to my gun. If you read uh, 100 Daily Skills Combat Edition, it'll talk about the non-violent posture. Hey, 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 I don't want any trouble. But actually what you're doing is you're weaponizing a very innocent stance. Ready stance, and then you can go straight to guns. Scan, and then back to ready. Look around, make sure you're clear. Okay, one try. That thing's f***ing badass. Alright brother, be good. Thank good you. Good hanging out with you guys. Thanks a lot.